Hi, I'm John, and this is NASA Now. If you think of the ISS as a submarine in space, there's no water that's drinkable, there's no food, and there's no oxygen for astronauts to breathe. So how do the astronauts survive in such an extreme environment? We'll find out later in today's program, but first, here's what's happening at NASA Now. <laughs> NEMO expedition team members have descended beneath the ocean surface for a three-week mission aboard Aquarius, an aquatic laboratory located three and a half miles or 5.6 kilometers from the Florida Keys. During their underwater mission, an international team of astronauts, engineers, and astronaut candidates will be experimenting with tools, techniques, and communication technologies to simulate conditions on near-Earth asteroids. Now, let's take a look at the past. November 20th, 1998, the first module of the International Space Station, named Zarya, was launched aboard a Russian proton rocket. It wasn't until October 31st of 2000 that the first crew boarded a Soyuz spacecraft destined for the partially assembled International Space Station. Here on Earth, we have plenty of air, water, and atmosphere to sustain plant and animal life. It's all part of a carefully balanced ecosystem. In space, none of these life essential elements exist. So how can humans survive in space? Biomedical engineer Stephanie Flynn is here to explain how the astronauts are able to live and work on board the International Space Station. Hi Stephanie, how would you describe the space environment? Space is an extremely hazardous environment. Without the protection of Earth's atmosphere, once you're outside of that, you're not able to breathe because there is no oxygen, there's extreme temperatures, you're closer to the sun, and so you are more susceptible to radiation. How are astronauts able to live and work in space then? In order for humans to live in space, NASA has to create an artificial environment known as the International Space Station. We make sure that the air is clean, make sure that the water is safe to drink, make sure that it's not too loud, and we also are able to measure all the radiation. Why do you measure radiation? The reason that we monitor or measure radiation on the ISS is because we want to keep the levels of exposure to a minimum so that when astronauts return to Earth, maybe years down the road, they are not at risk for cancer or other problems that come about because of radiation. Is there a name for all this measurement equipment? Flight hardware is the status that we give to all of the devices and monitors and equipment that go up to the space station to make sure that it's tested and, and proven to work. We don't want to send something all the way up to the space station miles away from Earth and then realize that it's broken. What is an example of flight hardware? An example of flight hardware is a carbon dioxide monitor. When we breathe, we breathe out carbon dioxide. So it's dangerous for astronauts when they are in one place for too long. If that CO2 builds up around their breathing area, it can cause headaches, they can get tired, and so we know that carbon dioxide negatively affects them. You mentioned monitoring the noise levels. How do you measure those? Our sound level meter uh, measures the noise levels in the ISS. The ISS has a lot of equipment and a lot of fans. So if you think of a noisy computer at home, it's got a fan, maybe loud fans, and that can be distracting while the astronauts are trying to do their work. And when it's too loud, we tell the astronauts to wear protective equipment or earplugs to block the noise. And how do you know if the drinking water is safe? We use a bioside monitor to make sure that microbial growth doesn't affect the crew when they drink water. So the way we do that is we take a sample of water and run it through a little cartridge that changes color. And we load the cartridge onto this instrument and it's able to read out the color change. And the color change tells us how much iodine is present in the water. And iodine is needed to kill off those bugs. 
Why is biomedical engineering a good field to get into? Biomedical engineering is a great field for anyone to go into if you're good at math and science, if you have an interest in healthcare. This is a great way to merge the two disciplines to produce something that's going to help uh, someone's quality of life. Did you know the United States portion of the International Space Station was designated as a national laboratory by the 2005 NASA Authorization Act? This means other federal entities and companies from the private sector can use the International Space Station to conduct experiments in a microgravity environment. Now you know. Living in space is no easy task. It takes a lot of planning and preparation. Here's a project where you can design your own space mission. You and your students can create your own space expedition to the moon in the lesson Lunar Nautics, designing a mission to live and work on the moon. It can be found on the NASA Explorer School's virtual campus. Well, that's it for NASA Now. Join us next time when we go beneath the moon's surface to discover what lies at the core. See you then on NASA Now. NASA Now comes to you from the virtual campus at NASA Explorer Schools. <laughs>